Hello, I'm Howard Gimbel. I would like to demonstrate for you the technique I now use for dense burnescent cataracts. It's a modification of the crater divide and conquer technique and utilizes Dr. Nagahara's phaco cha. The technique that I call crater chop was developed utilizing the series 20,000 legacy and the 30 degree bent Kalman tip. The benefits of crater chop are a reduced nuclear mass prior to fracturing and the dense nuclear rim is easily fractured by chopping. Before we watch the surgical footage, let's look at some computer animated graphics of the technique and of the parameters of the legacy that I use to safely accomplish this technique. The technique starts by cratering out the central core of the lens while stabilizing the nucleus with the second instrument. Then the nuclear rim is fractured into multiple sections and then these sections are brought to the center for safe emulsification. On this cross section, we will again note the central coring of the lens to form the crater and debulk the lens. Then the nuclear rim is fractured by the chop technique and the segments are brought into the center for emulsification. I begin the capsule rexus by placing the forceps centrally to create a puncture in the anterior capsule. This reduces stress in the zonules and improves the ability to attain the desired direction of the capsule rexus. I then grasp the advancing tear and continue in a counterclockwise direction. Stabilizing the eye with the forceps on the sclera is necessary when doing the surgery under topical anesthesia, which I do in 99% of cataract surgeries. For hydrodissection, a straight cannula is placed inferiorly between the anterior capsule and the lens. While lifting slightly, a fluid wave is directed between the outer cortex and the capsular bag. Additional cortical cleaving is performed at 4 o'clock to ensure complete hydrodissection. To ensure that the lens has been separated from its capsular attachments, I rotate the lens within the capsular bag. Hydrodelineation is not possible in a lens of this density. I begin the crater chop by debulking the central core of the nucleus, as shown previously in the animation. The angle of the Kalman tip allows one to sculpt down the slope of the concave posterior capsule. The Kalman tip, with its multiple cutting forces, allows one to quickly emulsify this 4 plus nucleus. Some experience is needed to judge how deep the central coring may safely proceed without rupturing the capsule. This is where the legacy, with its low-level control of ultrasound, allows one to thin the nucleus safely. By creating a crater, the nuclear rim remains, which acts as a safety mechanism, keeping the capsular bag distended. To perform the crater chop, the ultrasound tip is driven into the dense nuclear rim with a burst of ultrasound then the chop instrument is inserted under the anterior capsule and brought toward the phaco tip to split the rim. After the first chop, the nuclear rim is rotated and the same procedure is repeated over and over again until the rim has been completely divided into segments. I leave the chopped segments in place to maintain the distension of the posterior capsule. This facilitates further rotation of the nuclear rim. Here you see the split occurring and also some separation. Using the two instruments not only to chop the nuclear rim but to separate the segments. Extending the split into the, the uh, posterior part of the nucleus that has been thinned. Just short bursts of ultrasound and then maintaining aspiration only are used for holding onto the segment for the phaco chop and separation. As one turns the lens, uh, if there's some thickness in the posterior pole, this can be shaved thinner with the bent Kalman tip as we see occurring right here. 
This facilitates the fracturing to the posterior pole in this dense lens material. This surgical footage running at one and a half times normal speed demonstrates that once the nuclear rim is completely fractured, each pie-shaped section is brought to the center of the capsule where phacoemulsification is safely accomplished. This is when the aspiration flow rate of 27 cc's per minute in foot position 3 provides for excellent followability. A vacuum of 140 millimeters of mercury is more than sufficient for holding the chopped nuclear segments while they're emulsified. The angle of the Kalman tip aids in removing the segments. By laying the tip on the side, I'm able to quickly occlude the port. This is especially helpful to reach some segments in the periphery under the anterior capsule edge. The nuclear plate here still needs to be emulsified separately and you can see that this is really the what would ordinarily be epinucleus but in this case it's very rigid material. The cortical material is easily removed using surgeon control of aspiration. This setting allows one to use very low aspiration flow rates to tease the cortex from the periphery and then once the port is occluded the aspiration flow rate is increased to effectively and efficiently remove the cortex. For polishing the capsule, I place the IA tip with the aspiration port facing anteriorly and polish with a sweeping motion. If there are still some wisps of cortical material on the posterior capsule, I use the capsule vacuum setting and turn the port directly down onto the capsule. This cannot be done if the capsule is very loose. Viscoelastic is then used to fill the capsular bag in the anterior chamber and the wound is enlarged for placement of the intraocular lens. Again, with topical anesthesia, it's important to hold on to the eye with the second instrument while the diamond knife is enlarging the incision. The intraocular lens is placed into the bag, holding the optic and then the second Haptic is placed in the capsular bag and the viscoelastic is removed from under the lens before the portion in the anterior chamber is removed. One must be gentle with this technique when using topical anesthesia. If necessary, the lens can be rotated just with gentle nudging with the irrigation aspiration tip to achieve optimum centration. For my second case, I will demonstrate another variation of crater chop. Instead of chopping the nuclear rim completely into all the segments before removing any of the segments, in this case I will remove each segment as it is chopped. A small central crater is established within the lens. You will notice my focal distance is at the posterior wall as the sculpting progresses to the posterior pole of the lens. This ensures that I can sculpt safely and deeply and that I am able to thin the posterior plate to facilitate complete fracturing. By utilizing the Series 20,000 Legacy and particularly the 30 degree Kelman bent tip, I quickly emulsify this 4 plus nucleus at a preset US power of only 60%. Additionally, the bend of the Kalman tip allows me to sculpt deeply into the posterior pole at a very low U.S. power level. Now shown at one and a half times normal speed, the phaco tip is buried into the nuclear rim with a burst of ultrasound and the Sinsky hook is brought under the capsule and the rim is sliced for a chop. The lens is rotated. Again, the tip burrows into the rim the hook is carefully placed under the capsular edge, out to the equator, and pulled against the tip to create another fracture. This time, rather than leaving it in place, it's emulsified as it is already on the tip of the instrument. You can see the lens is now rotated. Additional fractures and segments are produced and emulsified as they are broken away. Additionally, you will notice that at these high aspiration flow rates and vacuum levels that I use in memory 3, once occlusion breaks, the eye remains extremely stable. 
I've found that the advanced fluidic capabilities of the Legacy allow for a stable chamber over a wide range of parameters. These advanced capabilities allow me to safely and effectively perform my crater chop technique. The second instrument is used to feed the material to the phaco tip. For removing rigid epinucleus like this, I will use either memory 1 setting with pulse mode or memory 2 setting. And in this case, I'm still using the Sinsky hook, but if there's positive vitreous pressure, I will switch at this point to a straight cyclodialysis spatula. Through the use of the Series 20,000 Legacy and the 30 degree Kalman tip, I've been able to develop this crater chop technique for the phaco emulsification of very dense burnescent cataracts. The crater offers the advantage of reducing the mass of the nucleus prior to fracturing, and the chop enables the surgeon to effectively and efficiently fracture the dense nuclear rim. In summary, this crater chop technique extends the safe application of phaco emulsification to even very dense burnescent cataracts.